Primary care is usually a patient's first point of contact with the healthcare system. It's about managing chronic conditions like diabetes or high blood pressure, people playing an active role in their own care, making the most effective use of care providers' expertise, efficiency and coordination of comprehensive care across the lifespan, understanding that factors outside of the healthcare system can influence health, including things like access to fresh food, air quality, and housing. Across the province, primary care is delivered by physicians, nurse practitioners, and multidisciplinary team members. And in BC, primary care is in crisis. The challenges facing primary care are getting increased attention in the media, and political pressure to address the access issues in primary care is mounting. Before COVID-19, the system was already stretched. In 2019, 17.7% of British Columbians reported that they didn't have a regular health care provider. Now that number is even higher. The system is at a breaking point. People are tired. The unprecedented times of the pandemic have seen primary care providers and their teams working in emergency response context for an extended period of time. It's very clear that the patients, providers, teams, and communities that make up the primary care system need support. The Innovation Support Unit, or ISU, was established in 2018 to support primary care transformation with a focus on team-based care in particular. We like to work with multiple partners and share our unique perspective and position as an academic health partner working with an applied action research methodologies informed by human-centered design thinking and driven by the need to support a learning healthcare system that is responsive and sustainable. As we were developing team mapping, it became pretty clear pretty quickly that in addition to helping clinical team members work better together, communities were also looking for a way to help engage their stakeholders and key partners in the planning and coordination process for transformation of primary care. Pack mapping is a collaborative planning approach that is grounded in design thinking. It does this by bringing together key community stakeholders in a short facilitated workshop. In the workshop, the participants or the key stakeholders work together around a patient persona who represents the local gaps in the area of focus for the workshop. By working together and examining the needs of the patient persona, the key stakeholders build on their local expertise and knowledge to help fill those gaps by co-creating solutions in real time. Together, these methods and their network of facilitators are helping to transform the primary care landscape in British Columbia. In 2021, the ISU started a rapid learning cycle focused on primary care provider resilience in the context of the added pressures of COVID-19. We conducted a document review, interviewed 28 people, family docs, nurse practitioners, as well as PCN leadership and coaches from across the province, before the pandemic, we were hearing from providers and from those involved in systems transformation work. In BC, this was primarily through the primary care networks, that the system was stretched. The pandemic really exacerbated all of these challenges. We started hearing more and more about how tired people were, uh, about people leaving professions they'd been in for a fairly long time, and began thinking about the importance of provider resilience as we think about next steps uh, for the primary care system. We went out to communities and started talking about this idea and really quickly heard kind of uh, resilience fatigue. We shifted our focus from provider resilience to thinking about system resilience. 
What can be done to enhance the adaptive capacity of the system to support sustainability? When we're thinking about resilience here, we're taking more of a socio-ecological perspective that emphasizes the interconnectedness and nested nature of individual, community, team, and system levels of resilience. To provide added context for our stakeholders engaged in the workshop step of this research, we created a short audio play with ISU team members reading direct quotes from our interview data. I think what COVID revealed is just how broken the system was. It's in dire straits right now for everybody because they're exhausted. The pandemic is still here. There's still urgencies. How can we look at what we're going to be like? A lot of people are just feeling burnt out and taxed for a number of reasons. The morale is pretty low. There was a hope that at some point the workload would scale back, and it just hasn't. People need to feel like they have a better choice or autonomy before they get to the point where they are completely burnt out or depressed. We're essentially all in a collective trauma response and our nervous systems are hijacked. And so what's the small ways that we can potentially drop back into like rest and relaxation, even for just 10 minutes a day, just to be like, okay, I'm not actively dying right now. I don't know if there's going to be enough healthcare providers left in the system when the pandemic is over. Three years from now, I think we're still going to be dealing with the mental health aspects. And priorities keep coming down the pipe, with providers having a very limited understanding of systems level and how things are working together. When there's not a hundred COVID bears chasing everyone around all the time, how do we recover? How do we build in what we need to just like be able to rest and reset? We need system change. That's what we need. Primary care, it's a great place to work. You get to build those relationships with patients. It's very rewarding. There's a lot to lose in the system if we don't support primary care. We've had some really strong team-based care. Team-based care is one of the ingredients to a thriving primary care system. It's a structure that enables people to have a work-life balance to the extent that they can self-regulate. I think that's the key to resilience. We are going to have to think out of the usual pattern that got us in here. People have to believe that what they're doing is respected and necessary. The way it is right now is really hard. How can we build those resilience tools? In this work, we clearly heard that providers are stressed, that it's a system level problem, and that working in teams is a protective factor when we think about primary care system resilience. Taken together, this work crystallized the clear need for tools, resources, and focused support to enhance the adaptive capacity of the primary care system in BC. So when we started thinking about what adaptations or ideas might we need to develop in order to support primary care system resilience, we started to realize that this is actually what our tools are already doing. And we think that there's more that we can build on here. To change the system and support sustainability within the system, we need to generate new ideas and support the conversations and engagement that needs to happen to enhance coordination and facilitate identifying and addressing gaps across the system. A system that has the capacity to provide care, address challenges, and adapt when needed. At the ISU, we're just starting on our journey to support primary care system resilience. All of our tools are accessible and open source, and our plan is that these resources will continue to grow we invite others involved in primary care planning and delivery to try them out. Engaging providers, community members, and policy and decision makers in collaborative planning to develop new ideas and approaches to coordinate primary care services is essential. Together, we can work to build system resilience in primary care. <laughs>